In this video, I'm going to show you some simple mobilizing soft tissue techniques for the hip, focusing on the glutei and also the piriformis. You can also use this as a form of an assessment for the hip as well, if you want to, because we are going to focus on internal and external rotation. And it's quite a nice way. It's probably more private for the patients to obviously keep the shorts on because it's quite easy to work over the clothes to treat these musculature. Um, naturally have permission because you are going to be contacting the gluteal area um, so make sure that um, you know your patient has consented to the, the techniques you are going to do. So what we can do first of all is I'm going to bend my patient's knee. Now this is quite a nice technique in itself because if I slowly bend the knee then this will indicate whether there's any tightness within the rectus femoris. This is called the test of Ely or Eli and then ideally the heel should come towards the buttock region but if it doesn't it could be that the tightness is perceived within the rectus femoris which is a, a hip flexor and a knee extender. But naturally with Max he has large hamstrings and gastrocnemius so it's not really going to approximate. I don't think it's particularly tight because his pelvis is not, is not really anteriorizing when I do that. We can also, I'm just going to bring him in a little bit, if I took his hip this direction, it is external rotation, even though it looks like the foot's going in, and then we should have about 45 degrees when we do that one, and then when I go this way we are looking for internal rotation of around 30 degrees. All right, so we can almost like assess external rotation and internal rotation by doing this. And this motion in itself is quite nice to passively mobilize the hips. Now, to do a soft tissue technique, I control the movements here. So I'm going to passively do all of it for him. He's not going to get actively involved. Now, I'm going to place my hand over the sort of like lateral side of the glutes. Okay, so you've got the greater trochanter around here. Piriformis will come from S2 to S4, the anterior surface of the sacrum, come across and it naturally fills the space around the greater sciatic foramen. We've got the other rotators, we've got the other five, okay, the two gallami, we've got the, the two obturator internus externus, and we've also got quadratus femoris. So there are many muscles that externally rotate the hip. There's actually 11 muscles, even though I've just mentioned six there. We've also got the glute medius, which, um, which will attach onto the greater trochanter here. We have a posterior fibre that turns the hip externally, we've got an anterior fibre that turns the hips internally. We've also got the large muscle of the gluteus maximus, which is also an external rotator, as well as a hip extensor. The upper fibre is abduct and the lower fibre is adduct. So we have lots of muscles around there, and the hamstrings attach onto the ischial tuberosity in here. So we can actually drift towards the hamstrings as well. So place in your hand, like this, okay, over the sort of lateral side, more the gluteus to start with, and then I'm literally just going to, because the glutei are mainly internal rotators, I'm going to externally rotate and apply some pressure on the outside part of the thigh as I do this. I never have numbers. Yeah, people say how many times. I don't say I do it 10 times or 20 times. I just do it until I feel, one, there might be a change. And secondly, I do it where I don't feel I'm going to over irritate. All right, so just bear that in mind. It all comes with an ex experience coming from that. So I'm going to work on the external rotation, applying pressure to the medial rotators here. What we can do, if we want to, I can get my patient to, if I push this way, push you, okay, so that is internally rotating, looks a bit strange, but he's going this way, okay, so his hip is going in, so he's activating the internal rotators for 10 seconds and relax. So this is a MET, muscle energy technique, PIR, which is a post-isometric relaxation technique. And after the 10 seconds, we have a window of opportunity of 25 seconds where we can now encourage a lengthening technique. And we can just passively take him there and just hold that for a few seconds if you want to. With MET, we tend to hold the third and final technique for around 25 to 30 seconds, and that works quite well. And it's a great little mobilization technique. Now, if you believe the piriformis is involved, we'll want to internally rotate. So let's say if it is a restriction here, then what we can do is find the central part of the buttock and just apply pressure and just passively internally rotate. Don't use too much pressure now. A lot of people use elbows. I don't think you need elbows here. Where I can just glide through. If I want to activate the external rotate, I can say to my patient, pull your leg this way. No point saying to your patient, can you 
externally rotate the hip using your piriformis because most patients would, would, would look at you a bit confused. Relax, take a breath. Once he's contracted, go in this way, which is external. We can then go into internal rotation to lengthen the external rotators, focusing a little bit onto the piriformis. If you do have sort of like pain to the central buttock, I suggest you assess the hip joint. And then this way, if you have an internal rotation deficit, as in a blockage, it might well be either an arthritic change to the hip joint, possibly, in comparison to the other leg. Or maybe you might have issues like a labral tear or some form of impingement. It's hard to say exactly. But then these techniques work very well. You can also drift a little bit to the hamstrings. You can just glide down and you can work them one way. And then you can lock, say, the bicep femoris and work the other way. And these techniques work very well. Okay, if I want to do a rectus femoris one from here, I can get my patient to slowly straighten the leg, please, for 10 seconds, 10, 9, 8. After 10 seconds, relax, take a breath, stabilize the PSIS, and then just slowly take him into knee flexion, lengthening the rectus femoris. And that will also help the hip joint because it's a, one of the main hip flexors. And you can repeat that a few times. And again, just back to the mobility, just working through, trying to achieve at least 45 degrees in external and at least 30, 35 degrees in internal. If you've got a niggly back by mobilizing the hips, I can guarantee we'll reduce some symptomology within that lumbar spine. I tend to do both sides, um, especially if someone has lower back. I've hoped you've enjoyed the soft tissue technique for the hip, focusing in mainly on the six external rotators, but also a little bit on, on the gluteus. Thank you for watching.